Okay, now we're gonna we're in the third video of this series on the flipped classroom, and we're gonna talk about a little bit about how to design home modules and specifically uh, designing PowerPoint slides following multimedia principles that have been proven to be effective in teaching. And you, what we do, what we have to avoid doing is taking our lecture and just videotaping it and putting that online. That is horribly boring to watch. If you've ever had the misfortune of having to do that, you know that it's challenging to watch. Uh, even at double speed. Uh, here's a, an, an example that PowerPoint slides as well, you know, it, are not very effective in conveying information the way that we use it. Academic medicine is full of examples of bad PowerPoint. And, I, and there are actually principles that help us, right? Take, for instance, this great speech that was given by Darth Vader. Uh, if you put it on a PowerPoint slide, it takes away all the power from it, right? If you only knew the power of the dark side, but the but PowerPoint takes away that power. There are principles that have been um, created by Richard Mayer. He's a cognitive psychologist out of University of California that if you follow them, they actually have been proven to show, proven to have uh, better effects uh, in uh, learning outcomes. And so I'm gonna go over them really quickly here. And then I'm gonna go through an example of redesigning a slide using these principles. Okay, so real quickly, multimedia principle means words and pictures works better than words alone, right? That's the multimedia. You're using two kinds of media. Modality says that uh, that if you speak the text instead of just having written text on top of the images, it works better. Redundancy means don't read your slides. What's redundant about it is you're reading what you're saying. The contiguity principle says keep things that are alike, keep them together in space and in time. And so that the common example of this is if you're reading a text and it refers you to a figure that's three pages down and you're constantly flipping back and forth, that's a lot harder to understand than if that, that image was right on the same page as the text that you were reading. The coherence principle says to remove anything that is irrelevant. And this is my no clip art principle. Segmenting principle says break it down into chunks, into small digestible pieces. Uh, because our attention starts to wane after about 10 minutes. And so if you break it down into small 10-minute bite-sized pieces, uh, it's enough that you can understand. And if you don't understand it, you can go back and watch it. The image principle says don't put your face on the slide because it only distracts from what you're teaching. Personalization means that conversational speech is better than formal speech because you have to translate formal speech into something you understand first whereas conversational is easier to understand. And then don't use a robot voice. And finally, introduce the names and concepts before you show all the details. And that's what I'm trying to do here is introduce the, to these names. Okay, so let's go through an example. Now here's a slide that I found off on the internet uh, from the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, which is a campaign to try to improve uh, patients' survival from the, when they have an overwhelming infection. And this one talks about epidemiology, and it says that there are 95 cases per 100,000 in France, 95 cases per 100,000 in New Zealand and Australia, and 51 cases per 100,000 in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, with the point being that it's about the same across the globe. Now, it's not a great slide, so let's improve it. So the multimedia principle says that. If I were to say that same thing to you, that there are 95 cases per 100,000 in France, 95 cases per 100,000 in Australia and New Zealand, and 51 per 100,000 in the United Kingdom. With no pictures on there, it's harder to remember that than it is if I were to actually put those pictures up there for you to see. So words and pictures work better than words alone. Now the coherence principle says to remove irrelevant images. And this picture of the globe really adds nothing. I mean, yes, it's talking about global epidemiology, but it really doesn't add anything more to this, right? So let's remove that. Okay, now you can remove those images, removing irrelevant images, but it's important to put in relevant images, right? So that's what I did here. I took a map where I highlighted the countries that we're looking at. So France, the United Kingdom, and Australia, and New Zealand. And so that's the coherence principle. Get rid of uh, no clip art, because clip art is always irrelevant, but get rid of anything that's irrelevant and only put in relevant images. Now the contiguity principle says put things that's, that should go together next to each other, right? In space and in time. And so don't talk about one thing on one slide then, and, then, uh, and then three slides later you show the picture. Talk about them at the same time, but also in space. So here, these words are all off by themselves. We can do better by actually putting the words next to the country, right? And I also made them the same color so that really binds them together. 
Uh, and so you can see now that this Australia stuff is near Australia, France next to France, and the UK next to the UK. Signaling principle says to highlight the things that are important. And so what I did here was I just made these bigger. And what we're really talking about on these slides is the global incidence. We're talking about these numbers, 95 cases per 100,000. And so that's what I made more important here by making it bigger. The redundancy principle says don't ride, read your slides. So rather than saying, if you, you know, 51 cases per 100,000 in the UK, well, if you're going to say UK, then don't type it out down here. Or if you're going to type it out down here, then don't say it. You could just really get away with this slide by saying, you know, the global incidence of sepsis is about the same worldwide. And then you can show these three countries here where it was uh, very similar. The image principle says that, don't, you know, my face adds nothing here. And so oftentimes we'll have a, in the corner, we'll have a picture of the person talking. And really all that does, it serves as a distraction because the viewer is going to look at this stuff and it's going to look at the person and this stuff and the person. This back and forth really just adds a lot of cognitive load that we don't need. So get rid of that face. Okay, so those, that's how we would make a, a slide better. So let's look at another slide. So this is a slide on the approach to the chest x-ray. And again, you know, they talk about you, you can have a projection that's a posterior anterior or an anterior posterior. The position, inspiratory effort, you should see 9 to 10 posterior ribs. Penetration, you should see the vertebral discs just visible. And the positioning, the medial clavicle head should be equidistant to the spinous processes. How would you redesign this slide? You know, you can pause it here and think about it. Okay, and then let's, I'll tell you, show you how I would have done it. Okay, and so I would, this is, this is my slide. I put this here just to show you what was on the initial slide. And what I did was I got rid of all of the irrelevant words and I put in a picture, right, a relevant picture. If we're talking about a chest x-ray, what more relevant picture could there be than a chest x-ray? So I put a chest x-ray on here and I made it big, make it fill up the whole slide. And you could talk about the projection, and you could talk about the position, and you could say inspiratory effort should show 9 to 10 posterior ribs. And instead of saying those words, I said, look here, here are the posterior ribs. You should be able to see 9 to 10 of them, as I have outlined here. In order for penetration, you want to see that those, those uh, disc spaces in between the vertebrae are just barely visible, and they're barely visible here, right? And finally, in order to judge the ro rotation, you want to see that the clavicles are about equidistant from these spinous processes. And so you can see that this slide here, if you were to speak over it, is going to be more powerful than this one is, which is really harder to, to understand what we're looking at because uh, we are using the multimedia training principles here. So what I challenge you to do then is before the workshop is take some of your slides, maybe two or three of your own slides, and, and use these principles to redesign them. Right? And I can, I'll even put some slides up on my site. I have these that we used at a prior uh, conference if you want to redesign those. But I think it's better if you use your own slides and, uh, and redesign them. And then we'll see how it comes out. All right. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Bye.